Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today I'm bringing you the showdown you guys have been asking for for so long. Today we're checking out the FX8350. I know, right? I'm pretty late to the party. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. We're checking out the Intel i3-8350K. Uh, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> That'd be a big blast from the past, that'd be for sure. So, yeah, we're checking out this guy. It's the uh, new 8350K from uh, Intel. And we're going to be putting it up against the Ryzen CPU. It's this guy right here. The Ryzen 5 1500X. So I thought this one would be quite interesting because they're about the same price in New Zealand, so it's going to be quite a good price-to-price -price comparison. And let's jump right into it then with the CPU specs. So the i3-8350K is a quad-core, four-thread CPU. So four cores, four threads. It's coming in with a fixed clock speed of 4 gigahertz and a 91-watt TDP. And this is unlocked, so you can overclock it if you want to. The 1500X is a 4-core, 8-thread Ryzen CPU, coming with a 3.5 GHz base clock and a 3.7 GHz turbo clock, a 65-watt TDP, and it is also unlocked. So that being said, let's check out the test rigs. So the 8350K here was tested with the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon, which I reviewed in my previous video. So go and check that one out because it is an excellent motherboard if you're looking for a Z370. The 1500X was tested with the ASUS Prime Z, uh, X370 Pro. <laughs> X370 and Z370 get so confusing now. Uh, so yeah, this is also a very good motherboard. An entry-level X370, but does a very solid job. Now, memory-wise, they both use the same G-Skill 16GB DDR4 kit running at 2933 MHz for all the tests I conducted here today. GPU-wise, ran the MSI GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X for all the tests on both rigs. And cooler-wise, we used the Deepcool Gamax 120mm CPU cooler, and that's a pretty good I would say a middle of the ground sort of air cooler out there that many people would most uh, likely buy, similar to one of the 120mm Noctuas or something like that. So let's talk about the overclocking and the temperatures. So the 8350K here overclocked like an absolute beast. Remember, this is a retail model. that I didn't get sent this by Intel. This is off the shelf at Playtech. So nothing funny like that. And this one went up to 5 gigahertz at 1.37 volts, which I think is very, very solid. It's very, very good. And let me tell you, this thing at five gigahertz is no joke. Um, it is seriously powerful. The 1500X had a very typical Ryzen overclock. Went up to four gigahertz uh, on all four cores like normal, and that was at 1.43 volts, which is a little bit higher than, than usual, but it's not really the end of the world. And that's very typical out of these Ryzen CPUs. They don't seem to, unless you get a very good one, they don't seem to like going over 4 gigahertz. Now, as far as temperatures went, I ran the Ida64 CPU stress test for 5 minutes. And as you guys can see, the stock results were exactly the same, which is interesting. Um, but once they overclocked, the 8350K does get a bit hotter. But they both they both ran relatively cool. So, yeah, still a decent job there. I think it's because the 1500X is soldered down, where the 8350K isn't. Uh, but, yeah, still very, very solid and no real issues there with temperatures. You could get away with any of your standard 120 millimeter CPU coolers just fine with both of these CPUs. So with all that being said, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform.
So what do we make of the benchmarks? Because they were quite interesting. So the 1500X, when you're at stock speeds, does a pretty decent job, especially in the productivity stuff. It did really solid there. I think that's mainly due to it having those eight threads and also the clock speeds when they're at their stock speeds being quite similar between the two CPUs. However, that all changes pretty rapidly, as you guys saw, once the 8350K is overclocked. So this thing at 5 gigahertz is an absolute weapon. You saw even in the productivity tests, it did better than the 1500X, which absolutely stunned me. So I always write my reviews and go into everything with an open mind. As you guys should know, who have been subscribed to me for a long time, I don't mind going against the grain. I always just say what I think and I tell it how it is. And it's interesting because a lot of people dismiss the CPU and uh, I don't understand really why. At its stock speeds, we saw that it was a bit limited. But once you overclock this, this is a seriously powerful CPU. It is no joke. The 1500X, you know, all, and this goes for all the Ryzen CPUs, is very limited in clock speed. That's kind of like the biggest con with these Ryzen CPUs is that they just cannot get up that high in terms of the clock speeds. You're limited to about 4 gigahertz, so if you get really lucky, like I did with that 1900X, uh, I got that thing up to 4.3 gigahertz. But really, you're pretty limited with your Ryzen CPUs. So yeah, interesting in the benchmarks, uh, you know, productivity-wise, at stock speeds, the 1500X did better, but once you overclocked, the 8350K ran away with it. And for the most part in gaming, even at stock speeds, the 8350K did better. But once it was overclocked to 5 gigahertz, it really took off. Which brings us to the conclusion then. And we have to bring price into the equation because that's very important. So right now at Playtech in New Zealand, you can pick up the 8350K for 295 New Zealand dollars. The 1500X is coming in at 270 New Zealand dollars and it has a cooler included. Now those prices may change a little bit because they're on special right now. So that, you know, the, the uh, 8350K is more expensive and it doesn't come with a cooler, but it doesn't end there. You would have to run a Z370 motherboard with this CPU, which is expensive. Uh, more expensive than a B350, that's for sure, which you could easily get away with with the 1500X. And, of course, you have to buy a decent cooler as well, especially if you're going to overclock it. So that's going to also add on. So all in all, you're going to pay a fair amount more for the 8350K all up than you would with the 1500X here. So who do I say wins? And this one's actually a little bit difficult. I would say this. If you are not going to overclock, you have no interest in overclocking. You're just going to drop the CPU in and that's it. I would go for the 1500X, that's for sure. Uh, this will do much better. You can use the stock cooler it comes with, which is just fine, it's a good cooler. And it will do you just fine, and you know it'll be very good, especially if you're gonna be doing productivity stuff as well, maybe some light editing, streaming, something like that. Uh, I think this one would be more suited to you if you're not overclocking. However, if you're an enthusiast and you don't mind spending that extra money to get quite a bit extra performance, then I would I would recommend the 8350K. A lot of the reviewers don't seem to like this one because of the value for money point of view. But a quad core at 5 gigahertz is still very, very powerful today. It's a very powerful CPU. So that's how I would say it. If your main thing is going to be overclocking and you want very, very good gaming performance and you don't mind spending that extra money, then I would go for the 8350K. Personally, if it was my money, and that's all I cared about was overclockability and gaming performance. I would fork out the extra money and pay for the 8350K. But as always, that is just my opinion. And you guys may not agree with me. as plenty you don't. And plenty of tech reviewers probably wouldn't agree. I know Steve at Hardware Unbox would not agree with this opinion. He told his fans and many of you viewers as well because we share a lot of viewers. Uh, to stay away from the 8350K. So I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with me or do you completely disagree with me? And did I miss the mark on this one? Do you think this is terrible value for money even if it overclocks very high and you should always go with the 1500X? 
I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's have a discussion. Keep it civilized like always. I don't like it when you guys fight. Um, but yeah, let, let's talk about this and yeah, let me know what you think. I'd be very interested to know. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already because it shows your support and I really enjoy it. And Teddy loves it. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.